Hey everyone, all right, so this is the video for the quantitative presentation uh, for CAS 204 research methods. If you have not practiced the math and the stats and the bell curve a lot, you need to make sure you do that um, a few more times uh, before we get into the quantitative presentation. So uh, sort of broken down class into sort of in, in multiple research methods, so we've done a rhetorical analysis paper, we've done a literature review paper, we've done an ethnographic paper. Uh, for the quant stuff, you just have a presentation. Uh, it will include an outline, uh, but it's not gonna require an entire paper, all right? Um, so this is kind of how we're wrapping up the quantitative research method section of class. Um, then we'll go from here, all right? So it's gonna include an outline, and then you're gonna have to give a presentation and we'll talk through that. Okay, so on Canvas, um, everything that I'm showing you uh, on the screen right now, it's in a document on Canvas under the quantitative presentation folder. Um, I just wanna speak through these things and try to be very clear about it. Um, all right, so here we go. All right, so you will create a quantitative study, uh, pick any topic within Com Arts and Science that you wanna study. So think about some of those larger sort of um, specialty subjects within Com Arts and Science. So, Interpersonal communication, or com, intercultural, public speaking, rhetoric, uh, etc. Um, as far as the topics that have been common, or students have done well, or gravitated to over the last few years, um, they've might they as far as communication. So some students have done things with like phone use. Um, they want to figure out how people are using their phones today. Uh, text message first, uh, you know, uh, speaking directly on the phone. Um, you know, social networking on the phone, et cetera, all right? Uh, family relationships, so how they might have changed. So you might have a question down here, you know, you have a good relationship with your mother, agree to disagree, uh, agree or to disagree on the Likert scale. Romantic relationships, um, people have done questions with regard to how often you spend time with your significant other, um, you know, uh, questions about how frequently significant others talk on the phone, um, how frequently they, um, see each other or go out on dates, uh, how satisfied they are uh, in the romantic relationship. Cultural, uh, so if you're interested in intercultural, you might have a, um, I guess it's a statement, it's not necessarily a question, but a statement of, you know, you are interested in traveling abroad, you know, agree all the way to disagree on the Likert scale. Um, you are interested in learning another language, so you have these types of questions with regard to how open people are. Um, when it comes to learning about other cultures. Public speaking, students have done this frequently in the past. Uh, questions about um, you get nervous when you are about to give a presentation, agree, disagree type of situation. Um, and then work communication. So you, you, know, you have a good relationship with your boss, um, agree, disagree. Uh, you, um, you feel like the that your job description is clear at work, agree, disagree, um, those sorts of things. Uh, within, you know, anything within com arts and science, any subject within com arts and science uh, where you can make uh, five statements about that subject and then have people fill it out, agree, all the way to disagree. Um, I guess it'd be strongly agree, agree, neutral, um, disagree, strongly disagree. All right. So, all right. Um, you're going to turn in an outline. I have a sample outline at the end of this video. It's also at the bottom of the um, this little packet that's up on Canvas, all right? So you're gonna turn in an outline. That's the only thing you're gonna turn in. And you're gonna give a six to seven minute presentation. We'll talk about the presentation in a second, all right? Um, research should be divided into four sections. So you need some sort of uh, lit review and a rationale for the study. So you do need to do some sort of annotated bibliography of three sources. So go out and find a source on, I don't know, mother-daughter communication, um, you know, after the daughter leaves the house. So sort of it's a, it's two adults talking to each other, but they have a mother-daughter relationship. Um, you're going to find three sources on that. And then um, the rationale part with regard to your uh, quantitative research, uh, anytime you are conducting a study, you need to provide a rationale as to why the study needs to be conducted. Um, you know, what's going on right now that is of interest with regard to know why this study is necessary all right so what what is the gap in the research all right so to speak all right 
All right, so um, you're also going to have this questionnaire part. So you need to create five questions using a Likert scale for each question. The scales need to be at an odd number. So it can be a one to nine, a one to seven, or a one to five scale because in the middle you need to have some sort of neutral option for people. Okay. Um, let's see here. Um, let's not do this. All right, forget that one. All right. Each part of the questionnaire uh, should be a statement that people can agree or disagree with. Uh, the middle number is going to be a neutral option. Uh, so, for example, if you want to do something on family communication, you have a good relationship with your mother. Agree uh, to disagree, uh, strongly agree to strongly disagree. Um, yeah, you and your mother talk frequently. If you want to stick with mother, if you want to say, you know, you have a good relationship with your mother, you have a good relationship with your father, you have a good relationship with your siblings, um, you could sort of cover all aspects of a family relationship uh, situation sort of within this uh, Likert scale. Um, all right. You cannot ask something like, uh, do you have a good relationship with your mother? Because that's a yes or no question, and people can't really agree to, on the Likert scale, agree or disagree with that question. So make sure that you are you come up with five statements that are agree to disagree on a Likert scale type of questions. All right. When it comes to the next section, all right, so you're going to have the, the results in there. So you're going to describe. So for each of these questions, you need to find the following. You need to find the mode, the, me, uh, the median, and the mean. So when you get all of your questionnaires back, so you're going to um, take these questionnaires, you're going to send them out to, do I have the, okay, you're going to send these questions out, errors out, you need to get 12 respondents. Now you could use people in the class, so you all have access to the people in the class um, through Canvas. So you can set something up, you can make, um, you know, there's plenty of things you all know more than I do as far as how to set up little surveys online. You can do that. Um, if you want to print off a handful and take them to some, you know, people at work or have your friends fill them out or something, that's fine. Uh, it all needs to be within a similar demographic, so I would say, um, you know, 18 to 23 year old college students should be filling out these surveys for you. Um, because if you start including, uh, you know, question, if you're doing like family communication, you start um, including people like, if you want to talk, you know, when it comes to 18 to 23 year olds, what's their relationship with their mom like? Um, and then you start asking, you know, older people in your family, like you ask your mom these questions on the it's going to, you know, it's going to be weird with regard to, you know, lining up the, the answers and the numbers. So you're going to get 12 surveys. Each survey is going to have five questions on it around a calm topic of your choice. And then when you put the results together, what you're going to do is you're going to take the first question. So if the first question, let's do the cultural question. If the first question with regard to culture is you are open to experiencing new cultures. Right, Likert scale one to five. You take the answers, the numerical answers from all 12 of those surveys that you sent out, and with those numbers, so somebody says, uh, you know, five, I, I strongly agree that I'm interested in other cultures. Someone says one, I strongly disagree. Uh, somebody's like a four, somebody, you know, you have a list of 12 numbers, one through five. You list out those numbers, those 12 numbers. And with those 12 numbers from that question that you got from the 12 surveys that you sent out, you're going to find the mode, the median, and the mean um, for the responses. All right. Then after you find the mode, median, and mean, you're going to find the standard deviation, and then you're going to create a bell curve, and you're going to label that bell curve out to three standard deviations. All right. So this is stuff from the last couple of weeks that you should have been going over with regard to uh, the YouTube videos as far as how to make a bell curve. All right. So you're going to make... Um, you have five questions, so you're going to be making five bell curves, all right? Each question has 12 set of data, all right, or yeah, 12 pieces of data um, for each question, all right? Now, obviously, if you're doing an actual, you know, big-time quantitative survey, what happens is, is people send surveys out like this about culture. You are interested in exploring other cultures. They'll get responses back, and it's going to be, you know, 500 people responded to my survey um, and so it's like for question one I have 500 numbers and for those numbers I have to figure out the mode the median and the mean and then I have to do a standard deviation and create a bell curve 
based on those uh, 500 individual numbers uh, I got back for just, you know, question one. And you might have 30 questions um, on this entire survey. So for each question, you have 500 numbers that you have to, you know, add up and um, figure out, you know, standard deviations um, and map on a bell curve. All right. For you all, you're just doing it. You're doing five, um, five questions. So you're going to make five bell curves based on um, the results you get back. Um, OK, we'll stop there. All okay? right. So with the results, um, you're going to have an inferred. Uh, after after you sort of map out the results that describe, you're just going to tell us like what are the numbers, what are the standard deviations? You know, maybe on the bell curve you find that the mean is a 4.5 with regard to people are really interested in exploring other cultures. So you're just describing the data of the 12 people that responded to my survey. A 4.5 as the mean, you know, we have this uh, situation now where it seems as if you know there's a lot of 18 to 23 year olds. Um, in my survey who really want to explore other cultures. So now you're just describing it, all right? You're just telling us what the numbers say. With the, inf with the inferred part, right, uh, what you're doing is, you know, what can I learn from this study, right? Scholarly opinion. So if I get a survey back that says, you know, there's a lot of college students, specifically in Penn State, who are interested um, in exploring other cultures, my inferred part might say something like, you know, I think Penn State should be offering more um, events on campus or more opportunities for students to study abroad or making sure that, you know, global awareness is involved in different like gen ed courses, right? Whatever it might be. This is you saying, hey, there's a lot of, you know, 18 to 23 year olds who are really big on, uh, you know, studying other cultures. What can we do with that information to create a system to make sure that they have those opportunities? If you're doing something with regard to phones uh, and communication, you might have a question that's like, um, I wish I spent less time on my phone. And maybe a lot of students are like, agree, I spend too much time on my phone, agree, agree. So now with the, so you're just doing the numbers, right? You know, the mean, let's say is a four, right? Mo, you know, so students are strongly saying, I wish I spent more time on my phone. There's a lot of students who are saying strongly agree. When you infer that, you might say, okay, we need to create systems within um, classrooms. We, you know, let's have like no phone policies, uh, you know, let's, you know, do some sort of like workshops where students are given the opportunity to put their phone away or turn their phone off or, you know, maybe like no phones in schools, which is some of the stuff they're doing in K through 12 right now. Um, it, you know, some sort of pressure, uh, you know, people feel the pressure to be on the phone all the time. Um, you know, we need to create moments where people can be off of the phone. All right. So that's the inferred part um, with regard to public speaking. If you find out that a lot of students have speech anxiety, so one of your questions of the survey is, um, you know, you get nervous when you're given a public presentation uh, on a scale of one to five. You have a lot of students who are near the strongly agree. After you do the mean, you figure out the average and it's a four, um, you know, strong. It's close to strongly agree. Uh, you might in you might your your uh, scholarly opinion, the inferred uh, part of the results might be something like we need to make sure that we are giving students more opportunities to practice public speaking or to be in a public speaking course or, um, you know, something with regard to like career services and job fairs and talking to potential employers. You know, you could just have a lot of you know, inferred uh, opinions with regard to how we need to set up um, an academic setting so that students get more uh, practice with public speaking, uh, so they're less nervous. Okay. With regard to your presentation, your presentation should be six to seven minutes long. Um, it needs to be recorded and uploaded to YouTube. I'll show you some stuff over here in a second. Um, you can't cover everything in six to seven minutes, uh, so maybe you only cover two of the five of your questions because those two questions are the most interesting. All right. When you're all done, you create the outline. I'll show you the outline on the next slide here. Um, and then you just turn in your outline through Canvas. Um, all outlines are due on whatever that Friday is, the week of the, uh, the, the week of the 22nd, whatever that is for our class, okay? So the way that you are gonna do um, an upload YouTube video, and this keeps it so that you can you know, make it as nice as you need to, six to seven minutes, you can time yourself, you might need to do two or three takes, that's fine, all right? You need to have some sort of PowerPoint. So right now I'm speaking to you through PowerPoint, right? So um, 
when you're on PowerPoint, you can make a cool little PowerPoint slide and then um, up at the top of the PowerPoint, it says record and you can just hit record from the beginning. And right now that's all I did. And then it just automatically puts my little face in the corner here. Um, and I'm just kind of going through my PowerPoint like I would in the classroom. Um, they have little tools down at the bottom where I can, you know, make little marks on my PowerPoint if I want to. All right. Um, so play around with that if you haven't. It's very, very easy. I am not tech savvy. Um, and I learned how to do this very, very quickly. So I'm sure there's lots of other video editing stuff. If you want to go that direction, fine. For me, this is just PowerPoint and you just hit record um, and it's super simple. All right. So practice it a couple times and you'll be good. All right. When you save your PowerPoint, all right, you need to make sure that you save it as an MPEG-4 video. So when you hit the sit, when you go and your PowerPoint's all done, your video's done and you hit save, you can save it as a PowerPoint and it'll still have this video stuff saved on it. But you want to make sure that you also save it as an MPEG-4 video because that's the type of video that you can upload onto YouTube. All right, if you try to upload a PowerPoint document on YouTube, YouTube will say this is the wrong format. So when you save the PowerPoint, hit save as in the PowerPoint window, um, and then use a little drop down menu to say, what kind of file do you want to save it as? And you say, I want to save it as an MPEG-4 video. It's going to take, you know, five to 10 minutes to kind of, um, you know, format itself. So just kind of leave it open. You're going to see a little bar at the bottom say we're saving your video. All right. So these are the three things you're going to do. You're going to first create an outline and turn that outline in through Canvas. All right. You're going to make a YouTube video presentation with the PowerPoint, and then you're going to upload that six to seven minute video to YouTube. So my guess is most of you have a YouTube account or a Google account or something. Um, make sure that you upload it. If you want to keep it private and send me the private link in the code, that's fine. Um, or once I grade it, if you, you know, just want to take it down because you don't want your presentation on YouTube, that's fine as well. Uh, but I need to have access it, uh, be able to access it through YouTube. The reason I use YouTube is because it's just always been the one easiest one that works. Um, I know there's all these other like academic video programs that, you know, some Penn State folks use um, or just college people in general. Uh, but YouTube, it's just it's public. It's accessible. It's super easy to get to. Um, so that's why I just do. That's why I put my stuff on YouTube. You know, when COVID hit, a bunch of people were using all these other programs through Canvas to do videos or record a Zoom thing, and then you give, give someone a link to it. That was just, it was so many steps. And so just getting students to YouTube, it, I, I've always known that it works on your phone, it works on your laptop, it's easy to get to YouTube videos. All right, now, um, once you record the YouTube video and you have a link for it, so once it's uploaded onto YouTube, put the link to your YouTube video at the bottom of your outline. So now all you're going to turn in is one outline onto Canvas. I'm going to show you the, what the outline should kind of look like in a second. Um, and then at the very bottom after your references, just put a little YouTube link there. I'll click on that and I'll watch your presentation as I'm looking at your outline. Okay, so let's go to this example outline. Obviously, this is, complete, is very much incomplete, but it's kind of generally what your outline should look like. All right, as far as like Roman numerals and little a's and everything like that, okay? So the first Roman numeral should just be the topic, right? Just one topic sentence. I want to study family communication between college students and their parents, all right? Um, I want to study cultural openness with regard to college students. Um, I want to study how college students are using their phones. Um, I want to study public speaking anxiety of college students. Um, I want to study the romantic relationship or the romantic relationship norms um, that are changing with college students. All right. So, um, yeah, some of the norms with regard to dating, you might be interested in how dating strategies are changing. OK, um, I want to study this would be a good one. Um, I want to study um, students opinions about face to face uh classes versus zoom classes or online classes i want to figure out if students like this or not all right so tell us what your topic is in a sentence all right and then you're going to have roman numeral two it's going to be your literature overview and your rationale so we did a lit review in this class um you don't have to do a whole lit review you're just basically saying here are three sources and then you want to summarize them in about two to three sentences all right, so just an annotated bibliography. 
So source number one says X, Y, and Z. So if you're doing something on online learning, you can go and find at least three journal articles that talk about the uh, efficacy of online journey, uh, uh, online learning, whether it's working or not working. Find three sources on online learning versus face-to-face -face learning, um, and then just summarize it, right? So source one says this about online learning, it's good, it's bad, um, it's helpful, it's not helpful, like whatever it might be in, again, about three sentences, so a small paragraph for each source. All right, so your this little lit review section should take up almost an entire page in a Word document with regard to your outline. All right, um, if you want to do something on uh, phone use, right? There's a lot of research going on right now with regard to phone use and how people are using the phones. Um, you know, source number one says we're using phones too much and it's, you know, inhibiting our face-to-face -face communication. It's increasing anxiety. It's increasing. Or it's, it's like decreasing self-esteem, like people are on Instagram too much and they're using all these filters and people feel bad about themselves when they're social networking, whatever. Find three sources about phone usage um, and sort of briefly summarize them, all right? Uh, cultural openness, um, yeah, there's going to be stuff with regard to whether or not people are more or less like xenophobic or how many languages people are learning these days or how often people are traveling these days compared to 100 years ago. Like there's gonna be some sources on um, some sort of like multicultural world that we live in. Um, so there you go, all right? The rationale part should be letter E, all right? So B, C, and D are just summarize the sources. Letter E should be here's the gap in the research. So if you wanna do something on online learning, um, the gap in the research might be, you know, there's not a lot of research on there about what online learning likes in a post-COVID world. So I want to look at online learning and figure out ways in which people are dealing with it now that we are sort of on the backside of COVID. Um, how online learning has changed. Online learning has changed a lot in the last three years. Obviously, it accelerated a ton once COVID hit back in uh, March of 2020. All right. Um, you know, something with regard to phone usage, right? Some, something about like the long-term effects. Um, you know, there's not a lot of research, you know, I'm sure there's a lot, a lot of research on like phone usage and it's causing anxiety and people are on it, you know, 20 hours a day and everything. Um, there might be some, re there, there might be a need to figure out research with regard to, you know, uh, I'm sure there's like a cohort of people out there who have like gotten rid of their smartphones and now they're going back to flip phones. Um, or people who are who are like deleting social media apps, right? I'd be interested in like learning, um, like figuring out, you know, uh, the social media apps that people might be deleting. Um, so if you want to do something on social networking communication, you can ask people about, you know, you can do some sort of Ligert scale where people are like, um, I um, I am on social media too much, right? Agree or disagree. Um, I wish I was on social media less, you know, um, I have, I have deleted social media apps in the past year. Um, I plan to delete, um, you know, my social media apps within the next six months. Um, you know, I, I have thought about getting rid of my smartphone and going to a flip phone, right? So these types of questions might be interesting with regard to how people might start to curb um, their phone usage or trying to, trying to eliminate you know, screen time. Okay. So with the questionnaire, this is number three. All this is going to be is you are just going to write out the five statements that you are asking people in this section. All right. So each uh, statement that you've come up with, um, me and my mom have a good relationship. All right. Okay. Um, whatever it might be. All right. Uh, just write out each of these five questions that you, or the statements that you are asking people, all right? Results described, here's what I found out for question one. So with, you know, this first part, right? Question one is gonna match up here. Um, and you need to do this for each question. So this little section, section four, Roman numeral four, it's gonna have five different subsections in it because there's one thing for each one, right? So question number one on, um, let's do culture. I am open to other cultures. So my first question here in little letter A here is, I am open to learning new cultures. When I took all the results across the 12 surveys I collected, 
and these 12 answers with regard to the numbers people gave me, one meaning strongly disagree, five meaning strongly agree. Uh, here's the mode, the median, and the mean for those answers. Here's the standard deviation I found with regard to you know setting up a bell curve. And then you are going to make a picture of a bell curve. So if you want, I just used like a clip art thing off of Google Images. And you can just kind of post a little bell curve up here. Um, and then obviously these are these this one or this zero, one, two, and three, these are just standard deviation number. But you need to actually like figure out the math on what each of these numbers would be, right? So maybe you're, you know, I am open to other cultures and the mean is a four and it's a standard deviation of 0.3. So then, you know, this one would be four, this one would be 4.3, this would be 4.6, this would be 4.9. And you label it as you, and then you sort of do the minus 0.3, minus 0.3, minus 0.3, if you have a standard deviation of 0.3, okay? Um, and then, you know, here's what I found for question two, three, four, and five. And each of these questions need mode, median, and mean, uh, what the standard deviation number is, and then draw a picture of the bell curve. Right now, if you're listening to this, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, you need to go back to chapter 11 and 12 and listen to those lectures a few more times. All right. Uh, with the results inferred, um, this is where you start giving your scholarly opinion. Right. What I found out is that people are really interested and really curious about, you know, a globalized world and exploring other cultures and learning other languages and all this other kind of stuff. Um, and so I think, you know, and then I say, you know, I think Penn State should have more opportunities or, you know, we need to, you know, do more like worldly events in our communities or we need to have like, I don't know, like I think somewhere around, I'm in media, Pennsylvania, they have like the Greek festival and stuff like we need to do more sort of cultural events. Um, uh, in our communities as far as like celebrating different cultures or uh, give people opportunities to learn other languages or, you know, make travel cheap or something. All right. Um, all right. So there's where we should take the following actions. Okay. So this is what I found out. And then, you know, my opinion. Okay. Then you're gonna have the references. So you have those three references that you did uh, at the top of your outline. Make sure you cite those correctly on a reference page here. And then at the very bottom of the references, this is where you just put the YouTube link once your presentation's done. All right, six to seven minute presentation, okay? Um, that's all I have for this. I know it's a lot, um, and it might be a little difficult with regard to the math. Again, if you haven't uh, really gone through chapter 11 and 12, those videos and done the math with me, um, I would recommend going back and just making sure that you do the practice problems with me while I'm watching, while you're watching the video, and I know me doing math on YouTube is not the most exciting thing uh, that you could be doing with yourself. Um, however, it's extremely necessary, and really, what you need to do, you just need to do, you know, ten different bell curves. Uh, you need to do it longhand, write out all the math. You need to do it about ten times before you start to kind of really figure it out. It'll make sense, all right. If, you're, if you did it once or you listened to the lecture, it's not gonna make sense at all. I'm sure it doesn't make sense. You still have no idea what I'm talking about with regard to standard deviations. Um, and you know this idea of like most of your results are gonna fall within one standard deviation. And so like, I understand like it's difficult to get if you just listen to a lecture on it. You really do need to just write out the math and then you start to fully understand what people are talking about with regard to drawing a normal standard bell curve um, we're not going into skewed stuff and, you know, chi square, like that's all grad level stuff. Right now, if you can just get a basic understanding of what a bell curve is, one, two, three standard deviations, um, most of your results fall within one standard deviation. If you can just understand those basic things and just make a bell curve with the simple math of find the mean, what's the middle number, and then from there, one standard deviation up, two standard deviations up, three standard deviations up, and then in the reverse. All right, so uh, standard deviations on the on the back side of the bell curve. Um, you'll be good for an undergrad 200 level <laughs> research methods class. Okay, um, so that's the assignment. Make a, a survey of five questions around one topic. It needs to be one topic, so don't combine topics. So just figure out. My topic is public speaking, right? How do college students feel about public speaking? Uh, how do college students feel about relationship with their parents? How do college students feel about uh, romantic relationships today? 
How do college students feel about, you know, cultural openness? How do college students feel about phone usage? And it doesn't have to be that, you know, those topics, I've, I've used those like four or five topics uh, in this video, but it can be anything that you can connect to communication in general, work communication. How do college students feel about communication with their boss? Um, that's your topic. And then write out five statements that relate to that topic that people can, on a Likert scale, measure one through five, strongly disagree to strongly agree. It could be one to seven or one to nine, as long as it's an odd number. Um, and then all you're doing is you're taking those 12 surveys that you get back and then look at all the answers for question one. You have 12 numbers that people have given you back for question one, right? You have 12 people, each individual person gave you a number. And so you take all 12 of those numbers, you write them down, you figure out the mean, you figure out the mode, you figure out the median, and then using the mean, you figure out, you know, the standard deviation, you make a bell curve for it. The last thing I'll mention, um, for numbers this small on one to five, your standard deviation shouldn't be much larger than one. All right, most of it's going to be like 0 0.4, 0 0.3. All right, if you get these, uh, if you do the math and you're coming back with like a standard deviation of three and a half, when you're only using small numbers, like on a scale of one to five, you messed up somewhere. You might not have done the square root of something. You might have, you know, the sum of squares stuff. You might have messed that up somehow. But you messed up a step if you are getting number if you are getting a standard deviation back that is far above the number one, All right? With very small numbers like one to five, uh, you're going to get standard deviations that are decimal points, you know, point three, point four, right? Um, if you use really large numbers like how much do people weigh, right? And all of a sudden you have some people who weigh 120 pounds and you have some people who weigh 220 pounds. Yeah, you're going to have a huge range. Your standard deviation is going to be like, you know, seven, eight, nine pounds, right? Um, so those are going to be large numbers. So the standard deviation for measuring a group of people's weight, yeah, the standard deviation could be, you know, nine and a half, all right? But for small numbers, one to five, you should end up with decimal points um, for most of these, maybe one, um, you know, but not much larger than the number one for a standard deviation, all right? Um, okay, that's all I have. Best advice I can give you is go back and look at uh, video for chapter 11, video for chapter 12, um, and then get those surveys done soon. Once you're 12, once you have the surveys complete, you can start sending them out to classmates. All right. Um, you know, I know that not everybody's on Brandywine campus. Many of you are. You can print them off and take them around whatever campus you're on. If you just want the physical copies, if you want to figure out a way to email them out to people and have them do them online, I don't care how you do it. Um, the easiest way to do it, though, is just five of your statements on half a sheet of paper. You print that sheet of paper off six times, cut it in half. So, yeah, you have um, half sheets. You have 12 surveys and just walk around campus and ask people to fill it out for you real quick. All right. Um, that's the easiest thing to do. That's the best advice I have for you to, to get this done. Um, I would try to get these surveys done within the next 48 hours uh, because then you, what you do is you'll have a lot of time uh, to do the math. All right. Um, okay. That's all I have. And um, yeah, I guess if you have any questions, you can uh, email me. But other than that, um, yeah, review chapter 11, review chapter 12. And uh, the best thing that you can do is you just got to start, you know, you just you have to sit down quietly in a room and just start plugging away at the math. That's the that's the best way to learn it. OK. Um, all right. I will. Um, yeah, I, I will look forward to seeing these presentations once they're turned in.